Welcome, um, everyone. So today, uh, myself and Dr. Melina Fielder from Shivega um, will be talking to you about <clears throat> uh, dogs' intestinal allergies and the vegan food solution. So first, really welcome. Um, this is a journey um, of the heart for both of us. We're very passionate about the work that we're doing uh, with Shivega. And um, everyone who um, joins the Shavega family, we're there to provide support, learning, education um, uh, to you. So the webinar today is on uh, our pet's intestinal allergies, um, and it's being created by um, expert uh, nutritionist and senior vet surgeon um, and a dear friend of mine, Dr. Melina Fielder. And uh, myself, I'm a senior lawyer. I am also a mediator and an ethical vegan. We both have um, uh, pets or children um, that we really, really do love. And the passion for our work um, is um, uh, for the care and love and better education for all uh, with um, our pets and other animals. So just very briefly, uh, before I hand over to um, Melina, so Shavega is here to support you, um, to provide education through webinars and podcasts, um, and also support through emails, um, to look at the solution for vegan pet food. So I've briefly described who we are. Um, so Dr. Melina Fielder, a senior vet surgeon and expert uh, nutritionist for pets and myself, um, a senior lawyer, a mediator, ethical vegan. And our main goals and motivation for Shavega was, um, it was a combination of our strengths, our expertise, but more importantly, our passion to create something different in the world and really show um, pet owners that there is another way of um, ensuring the best and optimal health for our pets, um, and also through food, which is plant-based. Um, and of course, we're supporting the global uh, vegan uh, movement, and not only because of the planet, uh, because of the impact that agriculture, especially animal agriculture, is having on the planet, um, but also because of the care and compassion and love we have for animals. And we'll be teaching you more about that as we progress. Uh, we were delighted to find out that we have been uh, PETA approved. Um, and this is the Prevention Ethical Treatment of Animals. Um, and so we are part of their friends, um, uh, Peter Business Friends. And so we were really deleted, absolutely delighted by that because it shows that we're working on uh, creating products which are elite, ethical, sustainable, and cruelty free. Um, and so, of course, Melina will talk later on about um, uh, the Shavega supplements, which were, you know, it's, uh, you know, years of expertise on Melina's side um, and years of expertise on my side on the ethics and sustainability, and of course, uh, creating something that works for our pets. Um, now, very uh, briefly, um, there's a lot of good research being done by um, uh, friends and colleagues of ours, um, including Professor Andrew Knight, who teaches at Winchester University. Um, he's been researching, um, and he's a vet, on vegan pet diets. And through all this is, you know, um, analytical research, science-based uh, research, which is showing um, uh, that even in cats. So we know that dogs are omnivores, but people usually think that cats can't survive on vegan diets. He's showing that there's great benefits in terms of health um, than when they're fed on meat diets. So there's a lot of great research going out um, on there. So when we talk, we are talking as professionals and experts in our field. So I'm absolutely delighted to hand over to my friend, my business partner and expert um, vet uh, nutritionist, Dr. Melina Fielder. Thank you, Ruby, uh, for this uh, wonderful introduction. I'm Dr. Malina Fielder, veterinary surgeon um, and animal nutritionist for the last 30 years. And I would like to um, welcome you uh, joining us today, watching uh, this um, workshop. Uh, so as uh, Ruby said, uh, our today's topic is intestinal allergies in dogs. And um, 
Uh, we know that allergies are very common, like in veterinary practice, we saw lots of dogs constantly. Um, like, well, you know, during the, the my vet practice um, daily, at least one dog comes with uh, either like having a redness in their ears or a discharge, um, then loss of hair, itchy skin, uh, diarrhea, vomiting. So that would be all, all, all different types of allergies. Now today we are going to talk about intestinal allergies in dogs, uh, but I'll just um, uh, uh, say a few words about what other allergies we have. So that's contact one, contact allergies they're called. Uh, with um, when dog comes in contact with different like uh, sprays, whichever like um, toxic sprays, fertilizers, perfumes and uh, mainly plants. Then we have flea allergies with do in, the, in dogs um, and inhalatory allergies from the pollens. We can't, they're called env environmental allergies. We can't do anything about that, but we can do something about the food allergies. Food allergies are causing inflammatory uh, uh, intestinal inflammations and um, uh, with signs of uh, soft poos, uh, occasional, they don't need to be everyday diarrhea. Uh, and what's happening, like same with the people, once they developed intestinal allergies, they develop leaky guts, the antigen is going uh, uh, from intestines into different systems like joints, skin, ears so it can be connected to mainly primarily from the food allergies uh, so what we can do we can definitely do something about that uh, lots of vets are um, deciding about commercial uh, hypoallergenic diets and i'll talk about them but why dogs um, at all develop these allergies uh, uh, on um, animal protein on meat. Why they develop allergy to meat? Uh, so it starts from the beginning when they are puppies in the early contact with food. It's not like it's in nature, what they, what's done in nature, how these puppies in the nature are fed. Uh, they are fed, uh, the firstly they are, they are uh, taken from their mothers when they are quite young, six to eight weeks. And uh, they are immediately exposed to the forms of animal protein that are hard to digest, that are exp exposed to the commercial food. And even raw diets are not uh, supposed to uh, pure meat or cooked meat or whichever form um, they, they can't easily digest, their um, immune system is not developed. And we know that majority is in intestine. Uh, another thing, if they are exposed to the gluten, uh, which is the wheat protein in commercial diets, they, they put too much of the, uh, of some, like a gluten that uh, if intestines are already, uh, exposed to allergen, you know, then gluten will worsen the problem. Now, what, what vaccination has to do with, uh, with intestinal, with allergies at all? Uh, we know that vaccines are produced in um, a beef uh, serum or beef plasma. And um, it's very common that, uh, that uh, uh, the vaccine is not like 100% pure. That, that's almost impossible. So lots of dogs uh, or majority of dogs now these days are they are vaccinated. When they get the vaccine in their system, they got a, a, a beef a protein. And uh, as soon as they start eating uh, beef, they become completely allergic to, to that kind of protein. So beef is number one uh, protein that dogs um, allergic since, you know, since a young age. Um, 
And uh, as we see, we like with, with young puppies, if they don't develop oral tolerance, means uh, they, they accept food. Uh, and they, that way that their immune system doesn't react. Then uh, they, will, they will be, as adults, they will be constantly allergic on many different proteins. And it'd be really hard to find the food for them. So um, the, in the next slide, we will see that uh, lots of dogs actually uh, don't get uh, the proper healthy food. Uh, there are also some um, uh, myths about um, dog food. Uh, like for example, that dogs cannot live without meat. The vegan dog food contains too much carbohydrates and that there is no enough protein, which I will also talk about. It's connected to the hypoallergenic food. And uh, how I got that, that this is not correct is exactly by researching about the hypoallergenic food that is produced in a um, man, at the manufacturers uh, that are um, actually promoting uh, meat-based food. So these manufacturers, and they are at the top, uh, like top brand, uh, they, they are making um, hypoallergenic food that is almost like vegan. You know, so they don't use any um, meat inside. They use uh, soy protein, which is hydrolyzed. They maybe just put some um, uh, chicken fat because of the taste or, or fries maybe. So, um, but the point is that they showed me, they proved me actually I didn't ask for a proof or research at the vegan food, you know. Uh, I, I went to, to, to their food, to their uh, description of the nutrients, and I saw there, there's no meat. And of course, I know from my practice and from the research that you cannot possibly give meat and, and preferably no animal protein at the time when dog has acute inflammatory um, digest, digestive problems, so allergic reaction, leaky guts, diarrhea, from all different uh, reasons, don't give meat. That's number one rule, or dog will never recover. So can dogs live without meat? They can. And it's even uh, beneficial because dogs, dogs are, since little, they develop that oral intolerance to all different proteins and, and sorts of foods. And like having a vegan dog food can be benefit, beneficial with these dogs, definitely. It's recommended. So that's what I wanted um, to explain about. And then in the next slide, I'll show you. This is hypoallergenic food that give us a proof that dogs can live without meat. And it's even like, this is the veterinary diet. You can see veterinary hypoallergenic food. And you can see the, what, what are the supplements? There's no meat inside. I mean, what's the ingredients? Uh, so uh, these, uh, these brands, they don't support veganism. The meat support, meat industry support, they use in any possible food. They use meat products, they use animal products. So there's nothing about their ideology or helping the vegan movement opposite. But they, they are avoiding, you know, meat. So uh, if you say to some, to people who are actually meat feeders to their dogs, uh, they might be surprised but uh, many of them use this food because um, uh, raw, especially raw meat, um, it's a, a high level of protein and that protein is not digestible because it's not given as it is given in the nature. And uh, 
I don't want to, to explain how it's given in the nature because meat doesn't need to be given uh, to dogs. Why would other animals suffer uh, for no reason? You know, that it's not necessary. So in, um, in the next uh, uh, slide, we can see, uh, we can talk about the, a little bit about the history adaptation to human food. We know since the dogs started following people, they, they started adapting to any situations like a vegetarian diet, um, before, uh, before the, the uh, fridges are invented, nobody really ate much meat. You know, the, you, you couldn't store meat. Meat is uh, like a, is, uh, toxic after three days, four days without fridge, even earlier. So now in these rubbish bins, nobody throw meat, but dogs can survive, you know, because they are opportunistic eaters. So they can eat whatever they are given. Of course, now with, um, with these, uh, these days, you know, when science is extremely developed, we can give them completely whatever it's missing in a plain diet, we can give them in the form of supplements. And also they, uh, they these thousand, thousand years following mainly vegetarian diet um, that people also were mainly vegetarians uh, they developed um, different uh, digestive enzymes that easily digest starch. Um, and we have uh, the pancreatic enzymes, we have mucosal disaccharide bases uh, enzymes. Uh, so dogs can, can easily, um, you know, uh, digest um, carbohydrates. As well as I, I just want to uh, mention this. Uh, in fact, fact is that 70% of carbohydrates uh, sources are used in commercial food from the reason that uh, they can make a kibbles. They can create and form a kibbles. Otherwise, kibble cannot be formed, you know. So, uh, while vegan dog food can be made with um, maybe 40% kibble per 100 gram, 100% dry matter, depend what you're giving, you know. So not that uh, vegan dog food is the one with a huge amount of carbohydrates and dogs don't need that. It's just um, a story, you know. And as well about the quality of protein, plant protein, like for example, pea protein or, or legumes, you know, they can, they have very similar amino acid. Um, they are digestible, almost like meat. And um, there is no at all reason why, why we can't, you know, exchange or uh, sub, uh, subsidize with the plant protein. They have everything in it. Now um, I can talk in the next slide about dogs eating behavior. Uh, so I said that um, uh, pre previously, like this source of protein, this is a, a vegan duck. It's fried. <clears throat> it is a gluten. If your dog is not sensitive to gluten or allergic, like some breeds, like Irish setters, they are, they are genetically predisposed to um, allergy to gluten. Uh, my dogs, they, they just love this. And uh, there is no difference between if I give them meat in one hand or fried duck. Sometimes they go for fried duck, which is vegan fried duck. So it's a gluten. Uh, so there is no, like my dogs, they don't like even raw meat. My cats don't like raw meat because sometimes I, I just try with different, you know, uh, with different ingredients. And I'm trying to see like, what's the difference? Is it really different in a taste or, but no, I can't see that they can really differentiate between those two um, ingredients, food. <clears throat> the only requirement in a vegan dog food is to be professionally formulated, to be complete diet and to be tasty. So, uh, we can see in the next slide, 
Um, uh, the only other, so th that's about the food, but um, like if, if you um, as a vegan dog feeder, um, thinking about is there any other like um, something that I would be aware of, something to check their blood or anything, I would say everything is perfect. Everything uh, that the food, vegan food, if, if it's professionally done, and if it's tasty, uh, you only uh, would be aware about the pH, like even meat eating dogs, like they are on raw meat diet, they have to check, they have more acidic urine while, uh, while they plant eating dogs, they have more, more alkaline urine. Uh, in acidic urine, you have oxalate stones, calcium oxalates that are really hard, and they have to be, if they develop, they have to be surgically removed. In alkaline urine, you have struvites. These urinary stones, uh, they don't need to be, in majority of cases, they can be dissolved. So they, they are less dangerous, like less problematic than the oxalates that are developing in acidic urine and uh, like a, Dogs should be checked um, regularly. So nothing is uh, different than meat-based uh, diets. Um, urine has to be checked, definitely. And then, um, so we can, um, yeah, that, that's all what I can say. Then Ruby, can you please yeah. now uh, tell us more about... <laughs> Thanks, also. Melina. Um, and and I, I like that point uh, that we, you know, to, to remind people about sort of checking the pH of the uh, urine is so important by getting, uh, what are they called, Melina? The, um, uh, the, the alkaline paper that you use, where can you purchase that? Uh, oh, is that yes, the vets? Yes, yeah, that's good. Uh, well, vets probably wouldn't sell that, but mm -hmm. it's so easy to get these papers. They are called pH papers. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so you can uh, get that in um, any health food stores. They're very cheap. You know, you just uh, dip in the urine or put under your dog or even cat, you know. And in a second, you get like in a minute, you get a result. Yeah. You just compare the color. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah, absolutely. Um, now, um, so, um, uh, so as, uh, you know, uh, Melina was saying, um, you know, the importance of, uh, you know, plant-based diet and how, uh, you know, the industry um, is actually using plant-based, but they, they don't support the plant-based yeah. industry. So exactly as uh, Melina was saying, so, um, our passion with Shavega is obviously that when you're uh, giving your um, dog, uh, you know, with the Shavega supplements, you're feeding your own diet, it definitely creates a stronger bond. And a stronger bond means that your dog's happy, you're happy, he's healthy. Um, so that we really do think that's, you know, a really important uh, component about sort of, you know, not just going and getting something, you know, unconsciously out of a bag, out of a can and just, you know, almost sort of, forgive the word, sort of, you know, dumping it to and providing it to um, your pet, but to actually really be mindful about what you're eating um, and then to also share it, um, but sensibly, uh, which is you need those supplements, which we'll talk about. But um, the other thing is, um, you know, providing all the nutrients and that's critical. And that's where, you know, Melina's expertise as a, an expert <coughs> vet uh, nutritionist is critical because you can't just share your plant food. And a lot of people do that. Um, you can't do that at all because although they're omnivores, there are certain nutrients which are really critical to them and you need to provide for them. So, um, you know, we've said it many times before is we, we just get very disheartened when we see um, people who are just sort of sharing their sort of vegan or plant-based food with a dog and thinking it's okay, it's not okay. Um, and actually we, we do say it's actually cruel cool, um, to do that. And then of course, you know, along um, uh, as part of our mission, um, you know, we, what we're doing to the planet, we're on some, you know, um, our, you know, consumption, consumerism, etc. It's all coming from a very sort of unmindful way of being on the planet. So being um, not really present. And of course, that's understandable. We're under an extreme amount of stress. You know, the first thing we all do is we get our degrees and or, you know, we get into the workplace and then we got to go into a mortgage. And, and so the whole system's structured in a way which is 
actually quite in it's not human um, and Lena and I talk a lot about that because we have our own sort of uh, practices um, because uh, not only is that lifestyle not sustainable um, it's it's definitely not what our life as human beings are supposed to be about it's a very sort of corporate machine of sort of just buying stuff and being stuff and it's all sort of unmindful. So as part of our mission, it's also creating, you know, as we connect with our dogs and as we get mindful about the food we eat, we're mindful about the food we give them. And then it's very, very natural as, you know, um, we don't advocate any religion, but, you know, you see with Buddhists, they talk about where your circle of uh, compassion and mindfulness extends. It's very natural that when you love your pet, you certainly then naturally extend that a cow or a pig or a lamb uh, is even more sentient. So how could we, you know, feed that to our animals? And that's really the basis uh, and, the, and the compassion and our mission and passion for Shivega is how do we sort of artfully, mindfully, um, and with a lot of grace, because we don't want to preach and advocate and make anybody wrong, but we're doing it through science and facts. And as two women who are sort of experts in our own fields um, to say, okay, there is another way of sort of um, feeding um, your your pets and 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 something uh, you know we we say is you know when I talk to Melina because obviously you know this you know you need that expertise in terms of understanding nutrition but not only nutrition you know for humans you need a vet who understands the physiology and the structure of an animal etc to then be educated on nutrition and um, and that's really really important and so. Um, you know, we, we've talked about how, you know, we've seen um, uh, dogs who are on plant-based diets um, and it's really, uh, you know, they're missing out on sort of some critical nutrients. And the problem with that is um, people don't uh, notice that their dogs have issues because we're so used to um, uh, having dogs with like itchy ears or, you know, runny noses or, you know, dry skin or the coat's not shiny. You just think that's normal, you know, that's a dog. But, you know, um, we, you know, when I talk to Melina about that, it's absolutely not. You've got yeast infections for the years or other things going on. And so it's becoming, again, more mindful about what is, it's not a dog just being a pet in the home. It's really about a little being, its own sort of life and really ensuring that it's sort of um, optimal uh, life because we love our pets and of course we want the best um, for them. And so, you know, as Melina yeah, it talks about the critical things is sort of amino acids, um, methionine, threonine, taurine, and carnitine is critical sort of um, uh, amino acids um, for plant-based diets. And of course, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, um, we completely miss that because we don't ever think about the combination. So certainly before uh, my discussions with Melina, um, I was sort of picking and choosing what I thought the dog needed, which was really uh, a really um, I, I would say, and I use these words uh, deliberately, it can be quite dangerous if you don't know what you're mixing and putting together. So that's again where the expert formulation, understanding um, you know, the, 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 the type of breed, the weight, the age, all of those things are sort of taken in consideration. And that's why I, you know, I, I could never dabble in it. And this is where the expertise of Molina is really critical. And also ensuring the vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, um, you know, antioxidants and anti-inflammatories. Um, all of this was, um, you know, what, how do we bring that in to the composition oh. of, uh, you know, the supplements and how do we do that? And so um, over to you, Melina. Okay. <clears throat> yes, so as, um, uh, so this is the product of uh, uh, Ruby's and mine um, uh, work uh, that, like for months and months, <laughs> long work. Um, and we created these uh, wonderful supplements. We are really proud uh, what we created. And uh, uh, we are proud because uh, the, the, the vegan uh, dog feeders, uh, owners, uh, have now everything in those two bottles and uh, they have explanation or like all nutrients and the explanation of diet plans uh, for uh, adult dogs, uh, puppies, pregnant mama dogs and lactating dogs in this uh, beautifully um, decorated uh, Shevega booklet uh, 
40 pages. But you can notice on the right side on your screen, these are all different uh, supplements that, um, as Ruby said before, with uh, different amino acids, with omega-3, prebiotics, herbs, healing herbs that are anti-inflammatory. And, um, uh, you know, and if you put that all together, we decided that we put all of them in our Shvega supplements. Uh, so people don't need to buy all different stuff, waste their money. Um, all, these, all these supplements, all these nutrients are extremely important for your dog's longevity and optimal health. So as Ruby said, uh, people get, just get used, like their dogs have uh, inflamed ears, red ears, and they say, well, that's how they are, you know, but that, that's how they should be, you know, they, they suffer, they are, they are beings that have itchy ears and pain and discharge, and they, they don't like that, you know, uh, so, so we created something to be really uh, sustainable. Firstly, you don't need to throw all these eight bottles. You just have to, uh, you know, have the, those two bottles. And um, um, it is, everything is inside. You don't need to buy anything. And uh, we are so happy that we can, very excited that we can actually offer this to the market. Like finally something that's, um, that's a combination of everything to give your dog optimal health. And that's what we are going for, optimal health, not just average health. So, um, so that's mainly, you know, what, um, uh, what I can say about our supplements, that uh, Shvega supplements, something new on the market, um, which um, um, are for sure, you know, the most complete and uh, the, the healthiest supplements for, for a vegan plant-based dogs, they can be also given to a commercial uh, meat eaters, meat eating dogs uh, in a in much smaller quantities just to enrich the, the commercial food as well. And uh, Melina, just, I mean, one question that we do get a lot from customers, um, you know, before they buy um, is, uh, you know, they say um, we had us, you know, the, the, the Easter sale, but they said, goodness, 120 pounds for these mm. three items. That's a lot of money. So mm. I think um, it's an opportunity to really sort of explain uh, why um, it is that amount. Um, and I think I'll, I'll just sort of uh, say initially is that, you know, the, the tub of the supplements is 532 grams, which is, you know, half a kilo. Um, and then the omega-3 uh, uh, capsules, and then of course the book, but more, and then afterwards, once you've purchased that, you don't buy all those three again, you don't need the book, obviously. Um, and depending on the size of the dog, you might not need the omega-3, but the, the supplements are, you know, uh, the first and foremost that you need to get. Um, and, 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 and that's, you know, the way uh, people are purchasing at the moment. Um, but more importantly, Melina, just if you could give a little understanding to them about um, how the sort of 532 grams and the omega-3 work for uh, different types of dogs um, and their weight, et cetera, and how long it would last. Yeah. So as, as uh, you can notice on this uh, slide, uh, we, uh, uh, we guaranteed for success. So that's how we made the supplements to be successful, to be the most optimal as well as we, we compared all these bottles that you see on the right side that are crossed, like don't buy them because everything is in the Shvega supplements. Um, now, depend on the body weight, uh, depend on the, on the diet, like if, if um, people feed their dogs, which is quite rare, every day with a cooked meal, but in, no, not uh, adding commercial or canned food, which uh, I, I rarely have the customers like that, <laughs> like we, we haven't also heard about that uh, much. Um, we, we give uh, like for a 25 kilo dog would be, uh, would last about a month. 
and uh, for if they are on a uh, like combination which is the most common way because we sometimes don't have time you know like to cook even for ourselves so we we give a combination 50 50 of um, 50 percent of the um, can or dry food and 50 percent of uh, our leftovers uh, vegetables uh, lentils and different food that we can eat and and have it you know uh, overnight and give give to our dog um, then this uh, for 20 uh, for 20 around 23 25 kilo dog it lasts four months which is really good you don't need to buy any herbs anything for inflammation for joints you don't need to buy prebiotic if your dog has um, um, you know like damaged intestines or soft stools it's all inside omega-3 which is anti-inflammatory and, um, you know, it's high in, in uh, antioxidants, like for older dogs, they are must. So um, I think what we wanted to do is actually to, to give you uh, one solution one in, on one place. And so you don't need to think if you miss something or you, could you do, could you give this with this, you know, it's all there. Um, and all prepared, all, all uh, explained in the booklet. And um, absolutely. Thanks, Melina. And the other thing is, um, you know, watching, um, uh, you know, using the supplements for my 14 year old Springer Spaniel. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say to Melina, my goodness, um, you know, he was on anti inflammatory, he was getting um, arthritis. Um, and, um, you know, he was losing a personality, you know, and I thought that was natural degeneration, natural aging. Um, and the extraordinary thing is within sort of two weeks or less of using the supplements, um, I found a personality developing. Um, I found, a, you know, much more puppy-ish, you know, coquettish. I was, I was, I was actually really amazed. And I kept taking uh, videos, which unfortunately um, I need to, you know, uh, put up. Um, just seeing how uh, much he was progressing. He's had blood tests. He's doing brilliant. He's a, you know, on a 100% plant-based diet. Um, and he's, he was really progressing. Now he was on a plant-based diet before, but I didn't know what I was doing or what to give. And now with the supplements and I know what to give him and how much to give him, I'm seeing a shift and a change because it's not only, um, you know, a longevity that we're looking at for a dog, we also want, you know, the animal to be happy. As Melina said, they're beings in their own right and they do experience pain. We do sometimes think they're stoic and they're fine and they can deal with it. But actually seeing a real personality develop, it makes me so happy. And of course, um, you know, Melina and I talk about this. I mean, Bono is certainly the passion for my work. I love him so much and I've had him since a pup. And, um, and also, you know, our work in terms of sort of, you know, getting people educated on a plant-based diet is healthy and it is completely um, you know, uh, possible. Um, and this one, and you have to forgive the um, uh, apologies, the it's not very, very clear, but that's just a summary of sort of, you know, the key thing is it's an expert vet nutritionist formulation. And that was really important. We're using Melina's expertise um, was, you know, really critical. And then um, the other thing is it's got the highest levels of um, essential taurine and carnitine and vitamins. Um, and of course, prebiotics are really, um, you know, uh, important and antioxidants in terms of, uh, you know, um, ensuring that, you know, tumors, uh, you know, don't progress and toxins, et cetera. Um, and of course, you know, um, it had to be something that was ethical, cruelty-free, plant-based, um, and also very critical for both of us is that we always said, um, we never wanted to create a business for the sake of creating a business. Um, we're at a certain point in our lives it's really about leaving a legacy, about doing good work. Um, and also, you know, when people, um, you know, when customers, uh, you know, buy um, our products, it was also continuing support for them. And later on, we talked about sort of doing, uh, you know, advocacy and bringing legal skills in, in terms of supporting activists, et cetera. So it's, it's a bigger mission um, that we're really, really, uh, you know, passionate about. And then of course, as Melina was saying, the, uh, the Omega-3, um, you know, it's critical that it's vegan because a lot of it's usually um, not vegan. And there was a large, um, you know, uh, vegan, uh, so-called vegan um, uh, company that was producing vegan food and 
their omega-3 was not vegan and they had to recall the product. So we're very, very critical about where we produce. It's got to have a high standard and also for the workers as well. So we're very, very keen that although um, you know, people produce in countries that are emerging, um, you know, uh, we don't do that, that we really follow very, very strict guidelines. Um, and also something natural. So Melina was, um, you know, very key about putting healing herbs um, in mm -hmm. to support, you know, sort of joint pain and, um, uh, you know, uh, in inflammation and, um, and allergies. Um, and then we were again uh, delighted that Peter, um, you know, put us on their campaign as sort of uh, a new product. Um, and we, you know, did a campaign with them. So we're really happy. And of course, we'll do work with the Vegan Society and other organizations and support them. Um, and that's that's our uh, sort of mission. So I suppose, Melina, now it's the um, questions um, and answers. And I think at this point, I will just stop uh, the uh, recording.